on this edition of MC Genchem, Atomic Emission Spectroscopy. This experiment focuses on the absorption and emission of energy in the form of light. To begin, you should be familiar with the electromagnetic spectrum. This spectrum shows the various kinds of radiant energy in order of decreasing energy, with gamma being the highest energy and radio being the lowest energy. Observing energy that is emitted or absorbed is known as spectroscopy. As you know in Bohr's model, there are energy levels that are surrounding a positive nucleus. If an electron absorbs light, then the energy level will increase and the atom will get bigger. If an electron emits light, then the energy level will decrease and the atom will get smaller. When energy level increases, this means that the atom is in an excited state. When the electron is in the lowest possible energy level, the atom is in its ground state. The energy values for a hydrogen atom can be determined by an equation that was developed by Niels Bohr. E sub n is equal to negative r sub h divided by n squared. With E being the energy, r being the constant value of 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18th joules, and n is the principal quantum number or energy level. To calculate the change in energy, use the same equation, just include the difference between the final and initial energy levels. Delta E means the change in energy, N sub F is the final energy level, and N sub I is the initial energy level. If delta E is positive, then this means that a photon of light was absorbed. If delta E is negative, then this means that a photon of light was emitted. The absolute value of the change in E equals E photon. Therefore, E photon is always positive. E photon can be calculated using the equation E equals H times C divided by lambda, or E is equal to H times V. Where H is Planck's constant, C is the speed of light, lambda is the wavelength, and V is the frequency. These equations show the relationship between the energy, wavelength, and frequency. Wavelength is the distance between the peaks of a wave. Frequency is the number of cycles per second of the wave. These two variables have an inverse relationship. So, if a wave has a long wavelength, it will have a low frequency. If a wave has a short wavelength, then it will have a high frequency. When calculating these values, always remember to pay attention to the units. Another important thing to remember is the conversion between meters and nanometers. Sometimes your wavelength will be given in nanometers. The constant for speed of light is in meters per second. In order to properly calculate the energy, you must convert nanometers into meters. There are 10 to the 9th nanometers in 1 meter. For example, if your wavelength is 200 nanometers, divide by 10 to the 9th, which equals 2 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. Other units to remember include energy, which is in joules, Planck's constant, which is joules times seconds, and frequency, which is 1 over seconds or hertz. A practice problem will follow. Refer to Table 1 in your lab handout. Let's look at what happens when the electron in a hydrogen atom transitions from an excited state n equals 3 to ground state n equals 1. Let's start this problem by using the change in energy equation. We will use the energy of the final energy state minus the energy of the initial energy state. This means we will take the energy from the n equals 1 level and minus it by the energy from the n equals 3 level. When we plug in these numbers, we get 1.937 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. Next, we use the equation C equals lambda times frequency and E equals H times frequency. Let's first use the E equals H times frequency and rearrange to solve for frequency. This leaves us with frequency equals energy over H. Energy is the value we got from above. H is Planck's constant. For frequency, we get the value of 2.923 times 10 to the 15th hertz. We can now use the equation C equals lambda times frequency and rearrange to solve for lambda. This leaves us with lambda equals C over frequency. 
c equals the speed of light, which is a constant, and frequency is the value we got above. For lambda, we get the value of 1.023 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. We can now convert the meters into nanometers. To do this, we will multiply 1.023 times 10 to the negative 7 by 10 to the 9th nanometers. Our final answer is 102.3 nanometers. When doing these problems, remember to use the correct units, and as always, use the correct number of significant digits.